Uh, you said you, you know, you, you're kind of reasonably confident in your ZVT, but like, you, you know, it's just like all the minor refinements, all the details, that sort of stuff. So, um, previously you were always doing pool first fallings into standard three hatch and then trying to go one, one roach ravager off 66 drones. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes you've got towards two, two and like vipers. And then I guess eventually lurkers as well. Right. Potentially, obviously the viper is really important for dealing with their tanks though. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's usually like I'm I'm already in trouble by the time I'm making a hive transition. Um, but I also know that that's a lot of just my choices getting there. Um, yeah. But I'm also like, I don't know, I feel I probably feel way, way more confident in ZVT versus a lot of the other matchups just as far as like game plan and just I don't know, man, like I know I know what Terrans are capable of and I know what I need to do. So. Uh, you know, I feel pretty good about it. Cool. Well, the great thing about roaches is, um, it kind of just stops all the all the cheeky things, right? Any Terran yeah. that's getting a bit cheeky, if you're already going roaches by default, it's like so bloody easy to defend, like so much stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no I, I live that lifestyle, that. and anytime <laughs> there's a Terran who's like, "Oh, this is when I do my tank push," or "Oh, this is when I apply pressure," it's like. Yeah, I'm ready and I crush it and then I can usually ride that out to, uh, you know, to close it out, hopefully. Okay, awesome. All right. Well, if you're uh, happy sticking with that style, that should be cool. I, um, let's just take a look through it. Was there any particular, uh, I guess, repetitive issues? Like, oh, every time I see a battle cruiser, I know I'm screwed. Or every time they're going mech, I really struggle. Or two one ones or three racks times. Like any particular um, builds that come to mind as weak points or, or problems? Well, yeah. So, so the things that I think like would just be the most helpful is that I don't know any sort of just improvements efficiency wise to the early game. I think is just always fantastic. And um, the the Terrans that that give me the most trouble are either just you know super defensive like bio tank people who just like mm -hmm. see i'm going roach and never leave their base um yeah. mech mech is fine for me honestly i think like my 66 drone and go for it works out pretty well versus a lot of the mech i encounter um the the only build that like really grinds my gears is just double bc uh because i don't yeah. scout as actively as i probably should um, and maybe it's not quite as standardized as it could be, because that's the only one that if I don't know it's coming, I, I usually eat a lot of damage. Uh, one BC or even just regular turtle mech, honestly, I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, like I, I feel fine. Sorry, I accidentally muted my mic. Was, sorry, was that two port BC that you, that you yeah. mentioned there? Yeah. Yeah. It's only the double, yeah. the double BC version. Honestly, single BC, I, I was looking through my replays and I realized how many games I was winning. Uh, versus single BC, even if I don't really know what's happening, it's actually uh, pretty fantastic. Yeah. yeah, two ports tough, man. <laughs> um, especially because you're going a roach opening, like we going like nine, ten queens by default, which kind of makes you more safe if you go like ten queens every game. Versus, it's yeah. like it's kind of bad with roach to go ten queens because it really slows down your roach timing. You know, you're spending so yeah. much minerals. Like th th there is a beauty to going seven, eight queens still and still playing ling speed because like they often don't even realize you're going roaches till the attack's hitting, right? Because you can yeah. defend everything. Even if they go for like two on one or something, you're like, okay, I'll build like 20, 30 lings maybe. Defend yeah. with that with my queens, zone out, get good creep spread. To them, it looks exactly like a normal macro game, right? And then the roaches get across. But the thing is, you don't want to be building eight, nine, 10 queens to the point where you're like, yeah, I disguised it perfectly, but my roach attack's so late that I, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. Good anyway. So yeah, I guess scouting's pretty big. Um, Looks like you go for a pretty quick lair in this game, actually. So is that something where you're overseer scouting usually when that finishes or? Um, yeah, I mean, I like I like to, uh, you know, the the overlord I have on the on the top side outside the main. I like that to be uh, just pooping out changelings the whole time. Um, I, I honestly feel like I have techniques to get the information that I need most of the time. It's just it's just double starport BC, which is the one that gets me. But um, yeah. you know, I, I recognize that's just that's that's one build out of many. And honestly, I feel I still feel pretty good about the others. You know. 
Yeah, yeah. That's also a build which dies to anything as well. Yeah. So you could, you know, you can, even if they're building a safety banshee, usually they'll die to a ravagerling with it because it's just like they're taking the gases so quick on their natural and that sort of stuff. Speaking of which, that's actually like the big tell of it usually is them yeah. rushing the gases on their natural. You're like, oh, this is mech and possibly two port BC, right? So, yeah, no, I, I think yeah. I think the hilarious thing is it's always like, I'm at this point in the game where I'm like, I don't know what this guy's doing. Nothing makes sense. And then two BCs warp in and I'm like, oh, okay, th <clears> this <throat> finally makes sense. <laughs> yeah, check um check the timing that hits. I guess normally it'd probably be what, like 6.20 or something, I guess, 6.30 when they, they both teleport in, right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, usually. Something like that. Cool, cool. Yeah, so just keep an eye on the gases. I think most people will take the gases on the natural pretty early. And if you're using this overlord pattern that you've got here most games, then yeah. um, you should be able to see the gas on the natural, right? On most maps, if you've got like an overlord there. So if that if that starts getting more and more common, because obviously Gumiho beat several with it, which is probably why it got popular. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, I've struggled with it as well. I pulled it out as well to get easy wins when <laughs> playing TVZ. I'm like... Hey, this guy's way better than me. What can I do? I'm like, ah, oh, two port BC, you know, that way I don't have to play a fair game. It's just kind of like hoping the BCs catch him off guard, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, okay, that should be cool. Yeah, no, I mean that helps too. <laughs> just knowing, just knowing other things, I can, I can look around for. Um, yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Uh, and as long as we're doing overseas straight away, we'll be good. All right. So, um. You've only got four queens this game, so we are pretty slow to get up to five queens. Um, we, yeah, I think arguably we'd try to get five queens earlier and stay real light on the Zerglings, just because we went a bit heavy on the Zerglings, right? 14 lings is good. Yeah. And I think that should be all we need. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find a place where I can just kind of have those, like, automatically built in. Um, yeah. Just to punish a dive if, if it is there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm kind of like, this is, I remember Rogue did this where it's like, he just opened with Lings. It looks, it looks, it looks exactly like any regular Zerg opener and then a million roaches just show up with one one later on. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of trying to do an imitation of that, but I don't know if you have any thoughts on the Lings or when, if we're gonna when do you it would... that way, we need to go into the roaches much later. It really is just like a queen Ling opening basically so we're gonna uh -huh. need to get queens like a little bit harder if we want to stick with that and that's totally fine yeah rogues my inspiration for it as well when i do it it's yeah the same same thing just hey it looks totally normal rogues very <laughs> he's a cheeky fuck <laughs> um he, he likes getting his easy free wins so yeah uh let's go right back let's go right back okay let's, let's yeah i mean i tend details. to get the layer around like four 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 ten something like that which i do recognize is probably pretty early yeah, it's it's too early if we're gonna do that build. Um, if you're going straight roaches, so so I guess the way we'd we'd kind of talk about this, this uh, <clears throat> two branches, right? At the moment, you're kind of between both of them. You're between both, right? So we could do fast roach warren, and just basically skip link speed. So you'd get that roach warren, fast roach warren, skip link speed, fast lair, low queen count. You know, no hiding what you're doing. Yeah, but you're 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 more efficiently getting there, right? More efficiently yeah. getting there to a certain extent. <clears throat> Doesn't have anything that shoots up. You're naturally playing low queens, so it's a little weak yeah, yeah, to DCs yeah. by default, which is why some people you know don't like it unless they're really good at their scouting or getting their reads and whatnot. You yeah. don't have link speed, so you can't like do the oh hellions are moving out. I have a zergling waiting down there. You see what I'm yeah. signaling, yeah? And yeah, then just yeah, click yeah. that up the ramp and it very consistently gets in and sees the whole tech, right? Because if you're really good at like paying attention to stuff like that, like the number of times you can just see everything with just a Zergling with speed is like actually kind of insane. If you don't yeah. have link speed, can't do that, right? And the thing is, there's no reason to go link speed because, hey, we want to get the roaches. Roaches are the good unit. They're more efficient for defending things, right? Yeah. So with that build order, you'd probably be getting the roach warren at about 320 roach warren, something like that. Um, just five queens total uh no link speed um and then we'd probably be doing something like what you're doing like you know quick lair slash you know double oh, okay. chamber that's oh, that's of way stuff. earlier roach horn than i would have imagined because you're skipping link speed and you're not really building uh, any zerglings other than the initial four right so with that i see think about a four hellion dive you've only got the queens for it basically and maybe a couple slowlings left over and then yeah, yeah, yeah. once there's a six hellion dive it's like man you really want to have a couple of roaches popping out 
And there's naturally going to be probably like a narrow margin where someone's really quick with six aliens and they dive in, maybe your roaches aren't quite ready and it's like a bit rough, but yeah. that's kind of the way we should be playing ZVT in general, right? The if, if we only get punished one in 10 games, sure. If everyone's hitting us with the fastest possible Hellion timings, obviously we adjust, right? But we've <laughs> got to take those risks naturally or we end up yeah. being the overly safe uh, Zerg player who's putting themselves yeah. behind. No, I know. I mean, you know, if, if you're not saying, oh shit, he's here in a ZVT, are you really playing ZVT, right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? It's like, it's it's that thing. So many people want to be 100% safe, but hey, we got to... Gonna play on that yeah. knife's edge a little bit, and uh... yeah, <laughs> honestly, I, I think I like the version with link speed better. Like, I like the yeah. utility of link speed, and I like just I don't know, even if it's light map presence, I like having it, and I like I like poking around, you know. Yeah. So with that that one, you get the f faster layer overseer, so you do uh -huh. counter with like you can get a spire quicker, right? Because you're not gonna yeah. really defend with queens. You can get just lots of reactive spores. All that sort of jazz. Um, oh, uh, point on the two port BC, because I've seen a lot of people die to this. Uh, spores go between your bases. So yeah, yeah, point... yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, you okay, because I've seen so many people build like three spores in their main, three in their natural, three in their third, and then the BCs just sit between the main and the natural, and like your queens can't group up. You know, your yeah, queens I've, are getting picked I've... off whenever they move between the bases. And they just move to one base, kill a spore. Your queens try to move down, and then they just run all the queens down. It's, like, an absolute nightmare. So it's actually more important to protect, like, the, the avenues, right? To group everything together, yeah. yeah? I've learned that from negative experience. So <laughs> it's, it's great it. <laughs> when it's just right in between, especially on some of these maps where they have this, you know, huge space in between the third and the nat or something like that. Absolutely. Otherwise, they can be really super abusive. Okay, so we'll stick with the uh, link speed version. That's good. That we, though we've talked about the um, that's kind of the the fast roach horn version down there with some notes. If we want to go back to that, we can do it. Yeah. For yeah, now, yeah. we want to play this more like a standard kind of rule of one gas, and then there'll be some point as we're taking all the gases, basically, where we're kind of going, you know, double Evo roach horn lair, you know, all that stuff roughly around the same time maybe we'll get the roach horn a little earlier if we want it to help with hellbats but basically <clears throat> um we want to be doing so link speed branch that looks normal rogue inspired right all right so with this version we need to make sure we get seven to eight queens every game right okay queens every game um, standard rule of one. Have you ever done a rule of one gas like Ling Bane style? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's been a while, but I understand the idea, right? Three saturated mineral lines before you take them, and then you basically take them all at once while you're droning. Heck yeah, that's it. All right. I so... probably watched a pig video that explained it. <laughs> Glad those ones are uh, doing the rounds. Um, all right. So this game, let's talk opening. Let's let's look at the details, my friend. You are going for a very quick third here. Um, I'm not sure we need that. So I think your link speed, your gas timing is fine. I like that we're not obsessed over the gas. Let's let's watch from the very opening. Let's yeah, I usually details. rally rally in uh, once it's there. Yeah. Because um, yeah, it, I don't need it exactly at 3:30 anyways. If I'm keeping the Reaper at home and. Yeah, exactly. It's very rare people are diving in with their first two Hellions or four Hellions and, and getting in before link speed. So yeah, I see. A lot I, of I used to it. I used to do five Roach, and when I was doing five Roach, which opens with four Lings, I just became addicted to making four Lings because I don't know. I just really I really enjoy it. <laughs> um, second Queen was a bit late this game, and you're not producing out of your lava because of the Overlord distracting you. So. Let's look at this from your camera at this point because your queen should be queued up ahead of time, right? We always want that queen queued 10, 15 seconds before the first yeah. queen pops out just to make sure. Um, and really important that we're like droning up here and stuff as well. So you've gone 21 Overlord, which is pretty standard. So we're slightly supply blocked here, which is absolutely normal. The Overlord pops and we should already have the queen out and be going drone, 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 build the drone, build the next lava that's about to wriggle out as well. Hmm. And you can see here that we're just a little bit distracted, I guess. Um, yeah, just a little bit slow on that. For, yeah. And there's not really much going on. So it's just kind of like, all right, come on, get fix it, fix it. <laughs> um, and I think we're setting the rally point now to the natural. Yeah, you set the rally point to the natural, which is good. And I don't like that build the third. That really hurts me yeah, inside, yeah. man. That hurts me real bad, dude. 
you got four lava there. That's what the minerals should be going into. And that drone should be, even if it moves down and starts it at three minutes, that's like, it's not too bad having the hatchery a little late here because it's more important for you to just be hitting those drones, right? So pool first shouldn't put you far behind versus hatch first. Yeah. But a lot of people get distracted by the Zerglings or just this or that. And then they're a bit slow on building. And so yeah. you are going to end up quite far behind a hatch first just because you're not focusing on spending your lava as much, right? So yeah. um, do you have a marker for when you build that third hatch normally? Um, not really. I mean, I think the thing that usually throws me off the most is when I'm trying to like juggle where where exactly the Reaper is. Uh, and like like that's why I will occasionally just feel like I want to put it down before, like earlier. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So anytime you're doing that, just try to send the drone out a little bit earlier as standard just so that you don't have to worry about it, I would say. Like, if you send it out, I don't know. I think uh, I think there's one drone, like, I don't know, it's like the 24 drone or something that can just go straight from the main just to chill at the third. Uh, I've, I've been messing around with having, like, a specific drone to go there and do it, but I, I don't know. I've, I don't why, why not just yet. your first drone to leave the main um, once your main's saturated? Like, so you, you set the rally to the natural and then the first drone that, like, is rallying out, whether you click that from the egg or you manually build it, yeah. Um, you just send it over there. Because look, even if the Reaper sure. comes over and he kills that, well, that means your Lings are canceling his command center or killing the SCV on it. So like that's always a win for you, right? Sure. So try not to overfocus on that. Just always have this overlord. And right from the start, check this out actually. I know why you've made things harder for yourself. I see. I see now. Your overlord is just clicked to the front. That should be queued already. So you should already have your overlord queued to not just move there, but also click on the pillar. Exactly. You could have done that at the start oh, when there's nothing saying. going yeah, yeah. on. And then you don't need, all you need to do is like, look at the minimap. You're like, oh, it's getting shot by a Marine. It was Marine first, not Reaper. All you do is you A move your Zerglings into that na enemy natural, right? Because you know there's no yeah. Reaper and you just keep macroing and you don't even need to look at the overlord, right? You don't even need to yeah. look on that side of the map because you're like, overlord's getting attacked at two minutes. Oh, that means he did. He went, you know, that should be a Reaper, yeah. not a Marine. Awesome. Or, Oh yeah, I see the I see the blue dot moving past the overlord. Okay, my lings are gonna click in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and because because they're already shift queued, right? Like along the bottom of the map, like that or something, right? And then you just like, oh, I'll just queue up an A move or queue up a move command into the natural. So as the reaper hits yeah. me right there, and then obviously if he if he snags a drone or whatever, like with your opening, that really isn't a concern because you're the one who's got the offensive. You're the one who like if he wants to do that dance with you, sure, just grab yeah. another drone, send it to the other expansion if you have to or whatever but as long as you keep building queens and drones it, like if you start a third queen immediately and stuff you actually can delay your third a lot and still be spending all your minerals on just overlords yeah. queens drones with two hatches so even though we like getting the third up nice and early it's actually not that important so i think a good marker generally is just going to be like cool i've rallied my last guy to gas here next one is going to go down to that third straight away uh yeah everything else is just rally to the natural yeah uh, yeah no it, it definitely makes sense i i can tell sometimes i get i get too excited to play the reaper game or to annoy the terran <laughs> like yeah. I, I get i get really excited to do that so uh what you're saying <laughs> what you're saying is ringing very true to me all right so we're gonna make that habit q overlord to pillar or dead space right mm -hmm. uh safe area uh from the start awesome um and then that way we can be a bit more chill on that focus on that make sure the second queen started etc awesome okay very good mate so you're going to be droning a little bit smoother here <clears throat> we're not we're going to already have our drone there so if we're putting a third down it's uh you know on location but yeah four lava this early this is huge this is really slowing your start down yeah this is absolutely massive six lava Oof. and you've put back on gas no no, no. we haven't even started thing speed have we right oh yeah. Oh, this is a really rough start, my friend. Oh, my God. Thanks for the business. <laughs> yeah, I well. keep expecting you to spend it and you just build one drone and then an overlord. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, this is... this is. Oh, you're going to have so much more money the next time you play. This is going to be awesome for you. You're going to be like, what the shit? I have my roach timing. is just fast. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be awesome, dude. Obviously, this isn't every game. I reckon some games you do better than this. But if, if it's yeah. like this in this game, you absolutely aren't 100% crisp oh, every yeah. game. Well, right? don't worry, Pig. Some games I do more damage to myself because the fourlings are chasing an SCV. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah like, I got a micro of that as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I Oh, uh, good stuff, my dude. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, if you drone a bit harder there, that's going to be really good. Um, that's got to be the priority, really. Drones, yeah. drones, injects, drones. Beyond that, when do the queens start? 
it's hard for me to say looking at this replay because I'm actually not super expert on pool first. It does change the timings a little bit. Yeah. But for all intensive purposes, I would say from 40 supply would be the general marker, right? So 40 supply equals start nonstop queen production, um, you know, off all three hatcheries, right? So you need to okay. get three queens plus one more. So four more queens. So you, then you have three injecting and four defense queens, right? If yeah. you want to go to eight queens, that's totally fine, right? Um, so basically, yeah. Obviously, you can't afford nonstop queens. You still want to put some priority on drones. So if you've messed up your economy early, like in this game, I would still focus more on the droning, right? Then sure. the, I wouldn't be like, I'm going to build three queens and then be supply blocked and then squeeze out two overlords and then, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. build another two queens and you're sitting on 30 drones for the next five minutes, right? Obviously, if you've taken it, like still try to keep a balance if there's like a little bit of a gap in your queens because you've got a lot of lava that you just don't have minerals for and you're like, okay, I gotta get more drones out. Like you can kind of balance it a little bit. But if we've yeah. had a smoother opening, I think 40 supply will be a nice point where you go straight for the third queen, right? And then you uh-huh. kind of like have a pause while it's like droning, overlording for maybe 20, 30 seconds. And then it's like, okay, now I can start adding those queens in as well. That yeah. should give you a really nice uh, rhythm to it. Also, that, we don't need to leave a worker on gas because we're trying to be like super just mineral focused with this version and we're, we're okay. getting re- away from like the layer and the roach horn and stuff. Uh, okay. So I'll put that down here. No workers on gas. Uh, let me just rearrange this so it's in chronological order of the build. No workers uh, left on gas. And then we can put back uh, on gas at three minutes, 30 to four minutes is a, a decent time to do that, right? So I like to remember uh, first lava. Oh no, this is non-hatch first. Never mind, we can't use that marker. So <laughs> I was gonna say yeah, first yeah, lava. Three, yeah, three three thirty ish and change. Yeah, That's usually when I put good. back on uh, if I remember to do it. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And actually, the well. queens the queens isn't too different from what I normally do because like I know what you're saying about like there's kind of that pause and then you can fire up you know your second and from your natural and from your third and then i guess that would also include the main at this point now too yeah and your third might not be done yet when you start that so obviously it's like main natural and then the third will start up just a little bit later but yeah 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 yeah. that's uh roughly roughly it uh defensive overlord pattern because we've got two overlords on the map we're a bit slow to fill that out that's just kind of the way it goes let me see though have we where have we rallied these next two overlords so you're you're filling out the edges with your next two overlords yeah they are very far out like the one on the top is clicked. You can see just how far away that is. So technically they could come in like here with a liberator and just fly right into your third without you seeing it. So Sorry, I wasn't, I, I wasn't on everyone there. You, you've you rallied Did this you? overlord to there. Really? Yeah. So it's a bit far up. <laughs> I'd chuck it there because otherwise they could just come in without you seeing it. Like your bottom uh, one's yeah, fine. Yeah. I your think, bottom yeah, one's yeah, it's funny because I think you told me last time to get it like closer to the edge. So like they're on the edge now, but okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as long as they see the edge, like these ones are actually closer to the edge than they need to be. They could be like yeah. a third or a half a screen away from the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. have great vision. Since like, especially the main base one, we could argue same thing. A drop could come through or a liberator from that angle. Oh yeah, yeah. And, I've, and I've, I've been burned on that one side. already, but yes, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, so just try and visualize like, oh yeah, over those fruit friggin' trees there, <laughs> over the, yeah. I don't know, crystal no, no, pig. tower. When, when you told there. me this from ZVP that we did last time, I, I, I now clearly envision my early overlords having a job to do and they actually go to productive places. It's great. Awesome. I would, however, before putting those air ones out. Yeah. This one here, I would have shuffled further forward. Push them out, yeah, yeah. And we want one down here, right, as well, yeah? Because if we have one down there as well, that'd be huge. Um, It's kind of funny on this map because, yeah, this overlord, like, here, they can't really come through the rock, so that overlord can... Once that that middle overlord goes forward, you can kind of shove that top overlord up a little bit to properly see where the Hellions would come from, but... Obviously, that's just you kind of pushing the whole pattern out. Oh, he's got a Viking. You pull the whole Overlord pattern back. That's very APM intensive, very advanced stuff. It's very low priority in between the other things. But I think that other Overlord creating the ring on the bottom, I think that's the one which I immediately go like, hey, that plus the middle one pushing out are like 100% necessary. So we see where those Hellions are coming from, yeah? Yeah, gotcha. Awesome. All right. Um, So... Beyond that, you're simply going to be playing from a much worse position, right? So general benchmark would be rule of one gas, five minutes, 4.30 if we're... If if our opponent hasn't opened Hellion, say they've gone three CC straight into just Marines, they have a tank on the high ground, something like there's no offense at all. 
we should be fully saturated on three mineral lines at this point at five minutes or even four thirty by at four thirty, sorry. Um, a more realistic scenario, five minutes. We should have that third mineral line full. Now, obviously, you've built spores, roach horn, lair, extra gases, yep. and uh, and you're also uh, just slower on the initial droning, which is the more important thing because it slowed down the mm -hmm. buildup. But that's a good benchmark for us for future. So in this game, five minutes, 39 drones. We yeah. should aim for five minutes, uh, three bases full, right? Which is what, just... Have we actually saturated the second gas yet? I don't think we have, right? So it should be, yeah, no, no, no. Basically an extra 12, 13, 14 drones from here. Let's say, what, 52 workers, isn't it? 51, yeah? Because yeah. three mineral lines is uh, 16 times three, 48 plus one gas, three workers. So 51 plus drones, yeah. Awesome. So awesome. Uh, from here, all we get to watch is fast forward to how we use our roaches and see if there's any big, big caboozies, big, uh, big sillies or all good decisions and, and all that. Um, yeah, I would have tried to, um, cute little move when they do this. I, this I was pretty... very surprised by this move and, uh, my Queens took the brunt of it. Yeah. Uh, cute little thing you want to do. <laughs> I know it's kind of, it's tough. It's a lot going on at once, but um, if you can grab the spore from the third and the one from the natural and move them both forward and immediately replace them with a spore. Now, obviously, teleport's under the spore, so you, you would not do it in this case just yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you would try to, like, micro your queens away a little bit, right? Like here, transfuse or, like, move to the left a little bit, if anything. Your lings do okay that they kill a few hellions, but, yeah, I would um, be trying to back off here and uh, with those queens, which sucks because, well, you want to defend your drones from the Hellions. So I can understand why you went out and fought. But yeah, if at some point you grab the spore when he runs over to the right and try to yeah. move it over here, replace it with a new one because they build so quick. Sometimes sure. that really does make the difference, especially in these like weird Hellbat BC scenarios. But yeah, it's, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could tell I was being pulled in like two directions and like <laughs> it kind of worked out like a... <laughs> I was, yeah, I was impressed. I thought you were going to lose a lot more drones there, but you were like, just, just managed to, to hold it all right. All right. Yeah. And basically mech players ahead, but you know, you're never dead in these scenarios because there's always like space to come back, right? Against the mech player. Um, it's just going to be a more complicated game. And... So you did transfer workers out of your main, which is good. Um, we should tr probably try to have a fifth hatchery up coming up as well. Sure. But uh, I'm imagining you're trying to just win with Roach Corruptor just to keep it simple, right? This is my this is my push. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. like, okay, I'm going to kill you now <laughs> or not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally my win condition for mech is deny deny a fortified fourth. If the fourth gets fortified, I'm, I'm in for trouble. Um, but that's that's usually my win condition. Uh, and we're we're already kind of up against the wall here at this point, but this one control group makes me very upset. Oh, for the corruptors? Yeah, they should not be in with the ground army because <laughs> their their job is to hunt down the BCs, you know. And if you make yeah. them teleport, like if you attack here and then the BCs are there and then they teleport back, you fucking just a move them into the main where you know they've teleported. You just fly over mm -hmm. turrets, doesn't matter. You go hunt them down because your corruptors are just worthless for anything else, right? But if yeah. you get rid of those BCs and maybe they're only on Tank Hellion and then you just piss on all their factories, like that's a game winning maneuver, even if your Roach Ravager push fails. Because like you kill all their factories and then your next wave of Roach Ravager goes down the south and attacks the natural yeah. and you just like win the game right there, right? So yeah. it was painful because you walked into your own corrosive bios here because you're just A moving your oh, whole yeah. army as one. So check this out. Your Corruptors could be killing that command center and instead they're like running over siege tanks for no reason, right? Eating their own bios. They do pay on a planetary, which is fun, but yeah. Uh, your opponent actually knows how to build a good factory count too. Well done. Well done, hot sauce. Well done. So a lot of a lot of mech players who sit on like three factories and two starports all game or something like that. Like <laughs> Yeah, those are the ones I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ones that can't rebuild. Those are nice. And you play the guy who has eight factories and you're like, oh, get yeah, out. Yeah, or you're That's running up the natural ramp about to win the game and six tanks pop at once. <laughs> yeah you're like what no that's not meant to happen 
I'll tell you though, I'm an eight factory guy and I never have tanks in production when that happens. I'm always like, oh man, <laughs> I have eight factories. I should have six tanks pop out, but I have freaking one, one Hellion or something. I'm like, Jesus. Ah, yeah, pretty good movement, man. Um, you definitely could have done more run buys though and stuff. Notice how your opponent's natural's been wide open all game and you keep yeah. funneling, funneling into the top. It's just one of those things, dude. If you attack the top, your next attack should always be on the other side. If you attack the natural, your next attack should be on the top, right? It's just yeah. always like that's just like there should just be a natural seesaw, especially with mech, because yeah. you know that they want to like set up in one position. Same with like a disruptor army, right? You never engage head on into a disruptor army unless you have like Broodlord Viper or something, you know, to, to really yeah. mitigate it. So even just a big Ling run by on the natural would have been huge in this game. Um, also, you've been fucking him up so much. Notice how he's on almost pure tank now. Keep your yeah. eyes out for that. Um, if you can just always mix Zerglings into your army, it actually like the first two tank volleys sometimes kill 20 Zerglings. Like it's so worthless, whereas it would kill 20 Roaches, which is obviously way worse for you. So um, yeah, I, I, yeah. That, that's something I'm not like super sure exactly when the moment is to work those in. Because like, no, I don't know. I feel like I've tried with that. your first pushes. You'd only do it in a longer game because your first push is okay. usually pretty, pretty tight, I think. No, okay. But, that's, yeah. that makes sense. And it's, uh, it's like, it's just something to keep your eyes open for, like in this situation. The other thing is like a muta swap here, right? If you're trading a lot with roaches, muta swap can also be another cheeky way of, of just flying in and fucking them up. But yeah. they're both kind of like cheeky little things. I would say just the longer a game goes like this, just make a habit of always having a handful of Zerglings in your army. If you can do that. It's like a weird thing because obviously they suck versus Hellbats so much and stuff, yeah. but it's just a really good habit to have. Um, and if you do have melee upgrades, like the Ling run buys can do a what, lot as like, well. Like 10 or 20, something like that? For a run buy? Or, or just to have? Yeah, yeah, like 20. 20 is good, something okay. like that. Um, and, you know, like I said, sometimes you catch people like this army here. If you attack from the left with your main army, but you also attack with like 50 Lings on the bridge... Sure. They're gonna like get on those tanks real quick, man. And like, yeah, know, some lings on their left as well. It's like they're gonna they're gonna close in and drag friendly fire in, and also just drag those first volleys away. But yeah, this is a pretty um pretty dead position. It feels like from here. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. dead. Cool. <laughs> Let's hop out. Okay. Do we want to practice the new build order straight away, or should we um, or should we uh, should we look at other replays? Um, I think. I think I can give it a shot. Practice, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Well, host up a custom game. Let's just do one verse AI here. Let's really sure. get the, the build down because that's the uh, the power. The power. Let me, the let me just, can I just read what you wrote? So. <laughs> no, I'll talk you through it. Don't worry about it. Host up. Oh, host okay. Up. Oh, okay. throwing you in the fucking deep end of the pool, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. it's all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a 1950s dad. I grab the toddler, I chuck it in the pool while the mom's screaming that it's going to drown. I'm like, nah, yeah, it'll yeah. figure it out. Um, yeah, I'm a piece of shit like that. So um, hearing stories from old people about like learning how to swim. I'm like, oh my God. Um, just make me a ref and you can add like a very easy Terran AI just so there's no countdown at the start or no victory screen, I mean. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's do your opening. Um yeah, do your normal pull first opening. All right. And literally, if, if you can cue the Overlord to a safe spot, that's yep. nice. But other than that, dude, the only difference is remember when your main is saturated, you're going to send a drone out to the third, yeah? Yep. But don't build that third until the drone's there. Even if you've got yep. the money, use it. Just, 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 so just build drones better at the start. That's essentially it. Still build your yep. third queen straight away. Pull off all the guys once link speed starts. I'll remind you of all this stuff, but... Yeah, the main one is just get that drone towards the third and build more drones at the start. And yeah. I will remind you of 40 okay. supply when to start queens. So don't sure. don't even worry about that. Just focus drones, overlords, keep doing all that stuff and um, should be good. All right. All right, let's do it. Cool. You're a Twitch chat GM come to life in the voice in my ear. <laughs> Is it intentional that the sub goal perfectly covers the rank? No, guys, I'm, I'm on just a casting overlay because I, I don't do much coaching and I cover less of the information when I'm on that one. I don't know what my rank is right now. You guys will see it soon. Silly Twitch chatters. Paused. Oh. Sorry, my, ga my game's really loud. <laughs> All good, mate. Game's loud. I'm quiet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you have to unpause. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I'm the daddy. I forgot you gave me the daddy powers. There we go. Game resumed. Thanks. Thanks for the countdown. I, I appreciate it. All good. I do that every time. For years, people have gotten weird, even in tournaments. They're like, oh, oh, you're so nice when you try to do a countdown, you fucking weirdo. And I'm like, why wouldn't I? Like, the fuck? There's nothing worse than someone just hitting that pause button with no warning. It's annoying, man. It's jolting. But uh, it's all goody good. Let's, um, yeah, let's just do your normal opening. Good stuff. Yep, Overlord next straight. Same as always. Yep. Beautiful. Just queue those lings around the map, assuming there's a Reaper that's about to pop out. Same as always. Get that second queen queued up. We should set our rally points down to our natural now. You don't need to micro the overlord, just aim move your lings. You know there's a marine first, so just aim move your lings. Don't micro them at all and just focus on the build, okay? So just ignore them, yeah, once you've aim moved them. Good stuff. Good habit for ladder as well. Drone should be going to the third, yeah? Awesome. Yep. All right, start pulling off gas and let's get ling speed. Like I said, the third hatchery is not as important as droning, so if you want, you can get even more drones here, or you can start the third, but time to get those macro cycles going either way. Alright. Yeah, you're doing good. Alright. Let's get the uh, the queen you get as well. Third queen. Oh, you've already got the third queen. Drones, 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 man. you got five lava sitting there. Let's go, go, go. Yep. You built her real early. Yeah, real important we get urgency on those drones. Okay, you're doing real good. Awesome. All right, we're going to need another overlord straight away, mate. Better to have extra supply than less. All right, get those macro cycles going. Inject, inject, full round of drones. As many drones as you can. Drones, drones, drones. And now we can build the queens. Yeah, so if you went above 40, you spent all your lava and it was 44, you started building queens, that's fine. It's more important to just keep the production rolling, right? So don't don't freeze yeah. up or anything. You can put workers on gas now and just keep building queens. Every hatchery should be building queens. So overlords and queens and drones is the name of the game. Just make sure you put guys on gas in the main as well, yeah? Metamorphosis complete. Let's get some safety zerglings. About 410, 415 if we don't have them already. Unless we know for sure there's no Hellions, but obviously just do this by default. So that's plenty of safety lings. Lots of overlords behind that as well, of course. Never build anything without adding overlords afterwards or before it. You only built two overlords. You're at three bases of minerals almost. You want to be building like five overlords at a time now. So yeah, that's good. Ramp it up. That's it. We need uh, another queen building. We're only at five queens with two buildings. So we could even build one more if we want as well. Better for you to end up on eight queens than, uh, than too few. Keep droning and make sure you replace the drones in the main base. We only ever replaced one of those. So whether that's by manually rallying eggs or clicking some drones there, whichever way you do it, it's all good. I don't 
So your overlords are still in very conservative positions, but we'll fix that another day. It's just one of those things where they could be further forward in general to give you more warning. But for now, we are getting to that point, dude, where it should still be drones, drones, drones. No gapping, gaps in the production. Doesn't matter if you're saturated. You never stop droning, mate. Overbuild right. drones is the name of the game. All right. So you're building a road drone. That's cool. All right. So you, you've done pretty good in the opening, but there's a few points yeah. where you freeze up. Oh, I'm at 40 supply. It's time to start queens. No, 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 no. You finish the macros, like spend all your lava, then start building the queens. Here, oh, I'm saturated on three bases. I don't need more drones. You always need more drones because you're going to be using them to build buildings and stuff anyway. So yeah. <clears throat> you're chucking a roach warren down. Sometimes we'll get that earlier. Sometimes later, it doesn't matter. We're skipping spores entirely for this game, right? Yeah. We can add those in a future thing, right? That's that's something you're used to doing. We'll add that in, right? But um, yeah. the important thing here is going to be, so if we take a look in your document, in your notes... All right, so da, 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 da. <clears throat> all right, so we've got those benchmarks. You see where that is? Just above that, with the replay one plus new build notes. All right, so after forty supply, nonstop queen production of all three hatcheries, up to seven or eight queens, right? Okay. And then we also have about what four? I don't know, four and 15. That's, that's, that's seven or eight. That's seven or eight total on the map, right? That's right. Okay. About 415, build safety lings. Obviously, you can skip those. Can skip if no Hellions at all. But it's all a awareness advanced reaction. By default, you just build those, you know, up to 15 total Zerglings. You oh. went up to 18 this game. Uh, it's fine. You know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Sure. After that, it's okay. Just keep pumping out macro cycles, macro cycles, drones, drones, overlords and stuff, right? So at this point, though, we do hit three base saturation, right? Uh-huh. So, what are we going to do there? Now, you, you've added the... Whoops. Stupid Google Doc. There we go. Uh, okay, so you, you, you've got three base saturation. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take all five gases, right? Mm -hmm. At once. Now, what you can do with that is reset each hatchery's rally point yes. to its own mineral line as you do it. We did that in ZVP, right? Uh, yeah, it, it's something I'm, you know, I'm, I'm aware of and working on but uh I, yeah so if you do that just after a macro cycle is obviously a good time because it, it's very apm intensive it takes a while to like sure. take gases on each base and stuff and then come back and yeah, put yeah, gas yeah. on each gas um so that's going to be it and then if we're keeping the build really simple which is what we want to do for now after that we're going to go roach roaring double evo layer all right and we can start getting more refined when this is like real second nature to you to the point where you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to get the Roach Warren earlier, get the layer earlier, get the Evos earlier, right? You'll squeeze it in. But it's also just because you'll hit your saturation point earlier. Yeah. Um, so that'll be closer to five minutes rather than 5.45 or six minutes. And that'll make a big difference in of itself. Um, but that should basically, that takes us through the build. Are there any questions in your head right now? Um, do you have any like, oh shit, it's a two base all in procedure? Or don't even worry about that. You're playing Roaches, so it's a free win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, if it's like a big Hellbat timing, you're just defending with Queen Ling. We're perfect. But we're, we're actually just being greedy. So you're just going to have to pull all your Queens and Micro and like cut sure. off the Hellbats with Zerglings from behind and stuff like that. I think, yeah, I think um, I'm just nervous. I think I'm just nervous because my Roach Warren's not done at that time in my mind, but yeah. I'll have more Queens. So I think. Actually, it should be fun. We're just trusting in the power of the queen. And, and you'd be yeah. surprised how much Hellbat stuff you can defend with just queens. It's just about, yeah. there's a bit of micro, you know, it's just pulling back. You just kind of try to set up a concave with them. And you just pull back the yeah, weak yeah, ones, yeah. drop transfuses, bit of focus fire on the medevac maybe if it drifts yeah. too far forward. But otherwise, you just chill with it. Um, and, and as you get better at it, like, we'll get used to scouting with it. Oh, we always do an overlord sack. And we see that he's doing this thing so you know what we'll build a spine at the front and we'll chuck a spore in each base and you know this and that right like we'll, we'll, we can build adjustments on it but we sure. almost want to do the the pig-headedly stupid version of the build first just because we just need to get this macro so second nature yes that we can add the adjustments but it's not time to worry about those adjustments yet um yeah yeah, yeah. if we want to think about those like little reactions for the future and stuff it'd be like okay uh spore timing right sometimes you need it like right on 4 30 right yeah. usually 445 sometimes not till five minutes 30 if it's like a bc build right you don't really yeah. need the first four stuff 5 30 so spore timing's adjustable roach sure. horn timing right okay i think this just this guy's got hellions real early on the map it feels like he might be really aggro with them because i don't know whatever i've scouted what looks like a hell about timing behind it 
I'll drop the Roach Warren earlier at four minutes or something, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. No worries. Like, okay. yeah, we can we can do that as well. Or maybe a spine crawler at the front, like I said before. Maybe it's yeah. just that, and otherwise the build stays the same. Um, but otherwise, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think I see what you're saying too. Uh, the number one thing is the three base saturation. Everything else is kind of just uh, tacked on the end. Yeah, and like maybe you know it's a uh, you know uh, oh it's a two base tank all in. Well, maybe we just stop at five gas, sixty to sixty three drones. The thing is, I honestly don't think if you're good enough at macroing, you won't even realize it's a two base all in until you're already probably at 66. And then you'll sure. just be massing roaches and trying to survive with roach ravager micro, which you should be able to do. And I think you'll yeah. be fine at. Um, awesome, mate. Let's continue the build in. So we're at that point. You're halfway through a macro cycle. Uh, or in Yeah. So let's let's quickly just do the gases first, shall we? Um, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll do the gases and the resetting of the rally points. Then we'll do a macro cycle. And then we can do the the Roach Warren. Oh, you've already got the Roach Warren, but the layer and the double Evo chamber. Actually, okay. we'll cancel the I Roach did. Warren as well as okay. the first thing here. And the reason I want you to do that is just so we can build the habit of like, I really want us to work on the dumbed down version of the build. Because that's yeah. what I, I, I will do that yeah, when yeah, I do no, this build I felt well. naked. I felt naked without the Roach Warren pig. That's why I put it down. <laughs> well, today's coaching session. Yeah, yeah, no, hey, hey, how hey. to get comfortable streaking through Zerg yeah, yeah, yeah. Terran. It's, it's Show your the job Terran to... your gonads. <laughs> it's your job to push me out of my comfort zone, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so cancel the Roach Warren and let's take the gases and then we can do a macro cycle and then we can go double Evo Roach Warren layer all as one chunk. All good? Okay, yep. All right, three, two, one. Game Thanks to those watching in chat, guys. Um, please help out any newbies in the chat. Should be good. We'll talk to you guys all in chat in a little bit. Don't pay, as, as, as Wolfie says, don't pay a lot of attention to chat while we're coaching, but when the coaching's over, we'll be back to normal. This is looking great, mate. Let's get into roach production. Uh, obviously, our gas is a little slow with the 1-1 one -one starting there, but that's okay. Again, we already build extra overlords ahead of time. Now, if you've ever got extra minerals like this, you could always just take a fourth and fifth base ahead of time as well. And uh, even if they just end up being distraction hatcheries that your opponent stops to kill, then that's all good. But they're just like macro slash transition hatcheries as well. Um, just make sure you're building lots of overlords ahead of time. That's going to spend all your minerals. Yeah, we could probably build like 10 overlords to make sure we never get supply books. So like five more. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to get you to almost maxed out. Good stuff. All right. Um... Yeah, so there's definitely some points where you're like a bit low on stuff, right? A little bit naked, but we can't be reacting against the fear of what will come. We want to be dying doing this build and getting it faster yeah. and faster by default till the, the second nature mode is just like so crisp. And then you'll actually stop a lot of things without really reacting more than just moving your units to the right position, you know, moving your queens. But then we'll also learn, oh, this thing does kill me. But there's this clear, obvious tell of it, and I can just react like so, right? But that's going to be the... That's that's after. We've got to bake the cake before we put the icing and the cherry on top. Yeah. So... Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no. I, I think uh, anything to embrace the uh, the true Zerg greediness, uh, sure, I'm, yeah. I'm for it. A drone or die trying. Heck yeah. Um, awesome, mate. Make sure you have an overseer with your army always, otherwise you can't spot the high ground in certain scenarios. You could start breaking the rocks ahead of time as well, even before your push is ready to go. But uh, right now is push timing. Your upgrades are all about 10 seconds out, 15 seconds out, right? So we should be uh, getting set up for that push. We should have an overseer dropping changelings ahead or sending lings in to kind of see what their setup is and, and map it out, right? So if you're like splitting a ling into their third, their natural, their fourth, you're sending an overseer in, you're going, oh, their army's set up in this position, so I'll split my army here and here, then I'll do a big game. You know, all that stuff. We want to start mapping out for the push when your upgrades are halfway done or one-third complete. Because yeah. then we can, as our upgrades finish, already have our army pre-split in position and just basically A-move it on the dot. And that can shave 40 seconds off the timing, right? And if you're in a game where there's no pressure on you, which is actually pretty common. It's pretty common. Yeah. 
that players, they, they don't take advantage of the lack of pressure, right? And that's what you see at really high levels of play is people just being like so good at like, oh, you're not putting pressure on me? Okay, I'm just going to get everything done ahead of time, right? Whereas uh, the, the, the more kind of mid-tier players are more like, oh, if someone's pressuring me, I play exactly the same as if someone's not pressuring me. And this is actually even, even like low GM, I always give the, uh, the example of the difference between a low GM and a high GM player is a, a low GM player often plays the same from ahead and behind. Mm. Even that they're really tight. Low GM players have really good builds usually. They, they do have really good builds, but they're not adapting those builds. I'm like, dude, you're way behind. You need to like gamble like a motherfucker, right? To have any chance yeah. of winning, right? You just need to like, you don't need that extra thing that could help in, in a certain situation, that extra thing that could help. No, 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 like just make zealots, just make roaches, you know, go for yeah. the big all in, right? But likewise, when you're ahead, it's like, hey dude, yeah, that attack could win the game, but you know you can also get those upgrades and tech to that other thing and take an expansion and do that attack at the same time, right? Like you can just do everything at once, right? Because you're, you're so far ahead. So it's always just kind of good to remind of that. So same thing applies in these micro situations where it's like, hey, I've got amazing creep spread, right? That's what you've got because there's no pressure yeah. on you. This easy AI is an absolute cuck. It's doing nothing. <laughs> but also yeah. try to get that vision ahead. Like I love the having the overseer scouting out of the changelings and, and the, like knowing where the tanks are for me is so yeah. important for picking that push position, right? Yeah. Um, because you want to be able to get on top of those. And like, obviously they often take what the high ground third, right? Just to the left of their or below their main. Yeah. So usually I'd have half the army attack on that left and then half the army attack kind of through the bridge or the far right side is even better than the bridge. If, if you're, if you're splitting there. off roaches, you split off what, like 10 or 12? I would put my army in two halves if I'm doing a big 180 supply push. Unless yeah. their army is exposed somewhere where I can just kind of shove on them in, in an open area, my default would be to split my army in half. So like, oh, okay. and that should almost be your default anytime you've got a really big roach hydra, roach hydra bane, Ravaging Bane. Yeah. The bigger your army gets, the more susceptible you are to getting stuck behind each other, taking uh -huh. big tank shots, big storms, right? So I think, yeah. Bring those roaches back that... from the right, join them up, and then split your army in half and, and just start practicing that. But yeah, sorry, what were you going to say? I think the thing that, that usually, like, I feel like when I'm trying to make roach work, I feel like I need everything together, like, all the time, or I have no power. Um, and then when I split off like 10, it's like, I just feed them 10 roaches, you know, it's kind of, it's almost like ZVZ roach versus roach, right? Where like, I feel like I don't want to give them like yeah. my army bit by well, bit, but I think I've never it, I tried think that, the half. That makes perfect sense as well. Because if, if games were like that replay we watched, you're playing from behind a lot of the time. So yeah. you don't, you're, you're like, you're just trying to survive. So you don't even get a chance to set up a flank or you die. Like, or they just push yeah. into you, right? Like, but like, if you've got the proper number of Zerg units at the proper timing, then it's like, it's more just like, hey, how do I get all my shit to actually fight at once? And sending them in from two sides is actually so amazing. And like, if they push into you, it is the dream because it's so easy yeah. to set up the flank. Because if you yeah. get a flank and they're not siege, this is something so, so few players on the ladder ever get. Because they go, oh, they're pushing. Oh, he's not siege, jump on him. But all their units are stuck behind each other and they only kill one yeah. tank before the siege is finished, right? You come from two sides, the fight's over before they get a shot off. Like it's just over so yeah. quickly. And being set up like this, like, if you come in from two sides, you're just going to have more surface area, less clumping up to get splash damaged on. Um, yeah. You might only micro one half of that fight for the most part. The other half is basically yeah. removed. Like this, this is this happens, right? I do this with like zealot stalker attacks. I think first. I, I, I want to say I watched a video where you explained this for like Ling Bane and just like just standing with your army in two places and they do they do most of the work by just walking anywhere in between those two points. You know, like yes. It's, Absolutely, uh, it's it's magical, but I haven't really tried it so much with just the pure roach rab. But um, I, I'm familiar with the concept, you know. Yeah, it's actually massive. It it really is. Um, it's it's one of these things where like they just yeah they they just get stuck behind each other. It's like um, blink stalkers, right? I see people who build like 50 blink stalkers and have them all in one army, and I'm like, what are you even doing right now? Like. I, I, I hope you're parting. I hope you have parting, yeah. you know, Nina-esque level, just these freak mi Protoss micro players because they're all just stuck behind each other doing nothing 90% of the time. And that's a six range unit with a teleport that's, you know, more agile. Yeah, then yeah, you yeah. add roaches with their friggin' four range acid vomit and you're like, oh, it's just a bunch of drunk teenage girls trying to puke over each other in some weird 
uh, <laughs> club clubbing gone wrong compilation. I don't know. Everyone's puking up. It's gross. Um, <laughs> it really, it's just the, the amount of splash damage that's increased is insane. Like when I watch, um, I do find like I, I watch Roach Ravager when Serral does it first Terran, and and he makes it look like keeping your army in one big clump is quite good, and somehow doesn't take crazy splash damage. I don't know what he's doing. I think he's yeah. got some fucking warlock shit he's doing. Like he somehow his army doesn't get shredded. Is like got individual Roaches and Ravagers out front tanking the shots or something, and he's very good at like biling tanks and pulling back. But generally, yeah. um, if we just you know let the AI do it for us and split, it'll be really nice. Um, awesome. So I I think uh, let's rewind this game. And, and and I know we're not going to be looking at it together, but uh, what's the first benchmark you'd look at? Uh, five minute drone count. Sure. And what did you have there? Let's let's go to the tape. See, this is the most important habit. Right? This is why I'm going over this now because I'm like, I want you to do this every game you play, practice game, ladder game. Always got to have a benchmark. You always got to have minute, something. Forty six going on fifty two. <laughs> All right, what about right on five? Because we just want to look at the same game, game timer. Yeah, I have 46 game. made and I have seven in production. Oh, 46 made, seven in production. Oh, right, I get you. Okay, so 46, seven in production. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're not, you're not too far off, right? Yeah. And you had some safety zerglings. Um, your overlord positioning makes me really uncomfortable. So, if we look at your minimap at that stage in the game, yeah, just that front overlord can be so much further forward. And... Remember to fill in the third overlord on the right side earlier than putting those edge ones as well. Bit of a change in the habits. It's yes. just really important to get those three overlords out front. I just feel like you're in a position where, especially because you're not used to using two queen control groups, it's super painful. If someone's really cheeky with their Hellions, I feel yeah. like they could run in, kill all your lings before your queens do anything and kill the whole drone line. So you could both build plenty of Zerglings and plenty of queens and still lose a lot of drones to a Hellion run by. But if yeah. we just had a bit more overlord vision, that will never happen. Yeah, I think I have some on the way, but like I, I see what you're saying because this is a pretty uh, important time, I would say. Yeah, I just accidentally hit a keyboard. So if you watch this FOD later, that was an accident. I <laughs> Apparently there's a, a hotkey. It changed the scene to Jackie Chan licking his lips. Complete accident. I just accidentally knocked my keyboard. Um, that was weird. <laughs> this was not a strange joke at your expense in case you watch the video later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I appreciate it. <laughs> Um, okay, dude, cool. So, all right, we've got the build. Um, early droning is really good. Sending the drone out was good. Uh, the overlord queued straight to the safety just, just so you're not um, screwed up early. That same thing, random point yeah. while we're talking about it. Sure. ZVZ, that's really important with your first overlord as well. Pro gamers forget to do this regularly. Your, your overlord, if this was a ZVZ at like a minute 30, whatever, a minute, basically you want to go in to see if they've got an expansion and queue it to run backwards. So if it is a 12 pool. Yeah you don't get it killed by the queen because otherwise yeah. they can do a 12 pool run down kill your overlord with the queen do a ling flood behind it and you don't even know right so losing and losing an overlord against a 12 pool you know it's such a dirty dicey situation that's really yeah. rough so kind of same scenario um if you find yourself just very lazy or not paying attention in pvp you might want to uh, against zvp you might want to do the same thing there but obviously stalkers pop out a bit later than a 12 pool queen or a marine first out of a barracks so it's not as big a yeah. concern there yeah um cool. awesome mate um all right so so those are the main things we've talked about so far today um i think still committing to the roach timing is really good um before we finish up try to think of any other questions you have or anything that's not clear but otherwise i do want to talk about a transition really quickly because sure. i think this is um got just absolute god tier comeback potential right so what i like to do and i'm just going to detail it if you take something from it or not, that's good. But I do play a, a lot of Roach Ravager and uh, yeah. really enjoy it. So what I would try to do if I was trying to transition off of this is I always think of Infestors as the best, the great equalizer. Because you've okay. usually got good map control with the Roaches if they're like turtling up with tanks and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you can't kill them or you've, you know, maybe you've just scouted someone who's already got just tanks on the high ground. They're not even putting the tanks on the on the third. They're just like behind the natural wall on yeah. the high ground. And you're like, shit, man, I can kill some depots at the third, but I, I just, I don't have faith. Yeah. And if you don't have faith and you're not willing to just commit into it, you know what to do, right? It's like, well, all right, we've got to go to our transition, right? So you might just rush Vipers out and then go for it. Sure, that could work. But if you do want to try it, if you can't kill them and you scouted that, then try to get fourth base gas up. 
Okay. Fourth base gas up. So about 72 to 75 drones. 80 absolute max. And I do this a bit by feel, so it's a little, little sure. loose. But usually, basically, that's like, it's not many more drones. Basically, just saturating the gas and maybe a handful more on the fourth. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I'm usually going to probably pop that back down by building spores and spines anyway later, just because, you know, you've got very little, if anything, it shoots up. Yeah. Um, and I will try to tech towards infestation. And then I will get three infestors and then hive and spire. And I won't even bother with pathogen glands. But just that fungal, if I can ambush them with their bio moving forward in a big ball like they do, like to do against Road to Ravager, just mm -hmm. one or two fungals on that bio army just shreds it, right? So the trick is Roach Ravager Infester cannot be pushed, cannot be killed, right? It's unkillable because yeah. your whole point is just you can slow them down forever. Now, if they're pre-spread and the tanks are all sieged, your <laughs> Roach Ravager Infester looks like total ass. But the moment yeah. they unseize and move forward, you fucking drop a fungal and A-move that army and you kill it all like instantly, right? The number of yeah. times I've just wiped a superior army is insane. And then, of course, you swap to Broodlords. And the great thing about Broodlords is not only are they like the Vipers, amazing versus siege tanks, but like they just keep attacking. You get like six, eight Broodlords out, you can just shove with it. And they're basically forced to try and base trade with, with their bio. Yeah. Like they just cannot fight it. They will not have anything. You can grab every queen and bring them forward to transfuse in you know as well i'll bring every queen following i'll just click them on a broodlord yeah um, basically you go for an eight broodlord timing bring every single queen on creep dead. on creep key uh following a brood uh-huh to transfuse now obviously off creep that's a bit hard but you can bring Mineral an overlord as well if you want dead. even if you just use them for their ranged attack to kill one or two vikings that come out that's fine and basically you just do a big eight broodlord all in if you still have infestors they try to stim forward you drop one fungal right plus your roach ravager yeah. and your broodlords like it's just it's insane so that really is i feel like broodlord tech is incredible i've beaten a lot of terrans way above my level with this style like yeah. um so it's it's just a very powerful tech timing and basically be ready for them to base trade um sure in which case send most of your roaches you know send send yeah. a lot of you know just oh, split I'm, a lot of roaches oh i'm no stranger to base trading a terran who's out of moves versus like 170 supply of roach <laughs> and just get into that production is the key yeah right? I, I, even I, if you just other... keep one base mining at home like that's all yeah. you need right you just need yeah, to the... not lose all your buildings and get on their production before they get thor viking yeah. out and you're good no the other day i knew i was going to win the base trade before i even got up the ramp i was like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's um that's awesome, man. I, I actually um Lurkers are obviously the most stable late game as well. So technically I do go Lurkers sometimes as well, Lurker Viper. Yeah. And I've been doing yeah. that more and more lately. But the Broodlords to me always struck me as the easier tech switch <laughs> in terms yeah. of like, yeah, you gotta go infestation, then hive inspire, then great aspire, then morph your broodlords. But then yeah. it just felt simple for me. And maybe that's because I'm very comfortable with broodlords. Lately, I've been doing more Lurkers, just inspired by Dark. But yeah, Dark does the exact same thing. Like, I've been doing this for many, many years. And I remember when I first saw Dark add Infestors to help him get up to Hive Tech and Lurkers. I yeah. was like, oh, an actual legit player doing this. I was like, I was like, I know this is crazy efficient. Because I've been doing this for years as like a weird stall out tactic that you can always use to survive to late game. Yeah. And then Dark for like a year was doing his Cave Bob stuff. And he still does it the, sometimes. So the it's Infestors like are really just there to give you the space for hive and you know yeah. the greater spire and all that right because there's a point in where case like they the stim onto your face just right in. yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. okay but yeah that, i've that been in that situation so dying <laughs> i've been in that situation dying to that stim in before so i'm like oh yeah i guess that does make sense it's 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 hilarious dude it's, it's great my favorite is when i play 4gg because like with most players you get like the first showing of the investors is so important you really want to surprise yeah. them with it so you want to like i often have them like off to the side so they're not getting scanned and stuff when they're moving yeah, through the yeah. map and then it's like damn and i land it but with 4gg i land it and then he like he doesn't like adapt with his army movement he just keeps shoving in a ball because he's, he's the yeah. most aggressive turn so like the thing is he's so good at his mechanics that like i've got to land so many of those epic fungals to win the game still where i'm like like yeah. how many armies can i li like how many 50 marine hits with a fungal can i get <laughs> before i win the game i'm like jesus yeah. christ yeah you know, no i mean I'll, I'll give it a shot you know it's it's definitely out of my wheelhouse but you know i think it's uh it's always good to learn that i also know that yeah. like there is that kind of like 
that point in a ZVT sometimes where I maxed out and I literally have like nowhere to go, you know, like, like yeah. I, I, I don't have anywhere to go. So, you know, taking eight gas and pumping out a couple investors, sure. I'll, I'll give it a try when the situation uh, puts me and, there. And this is just like opening your eyes up, right? Because there might be someone who's just mega turtly and doing nothing. And if you get to cover the whole map in Crete, build an extra yeah. 10 workers and just go to hive tech, like the thing is the earlier you do that, it's amazing the power that's there. So as you get yeah. more experience with like, oh, scouting ahead of your push, like I was saying with overseas and stuff, you're like, oh, this guy's like just massing tanks on the high ground. Like... Oh, I'm only at 130 supply and I'm already like, oh, I don't think this is going to work. Drop infestation pit, make 10 more drones for that fourth base, take the gases, go the hive and spy. Like, like you know, you can just, yeah. and you do that and you realize like it's literally a free win because he's like, I'm ready yeah. to push with biotank. And you're like, I have broodlords. I, I think, I think that's always the hardest thing about getting to hive is that I feel like you always need, you need like a running start to get there. Like you need mm -hmm. like something that's happened to give you like this ability to make this huge dramatic change in tech and uh um, yeah you know and, i I'm, and that's I'm, like i've always been a, i've always yeah. been a layer guy you know because like i yeah. i always just go way too late to hive and with not enough and then lose six broods to two vikings or whatever you know like <laughs> yeah well you clear that third base and then maybe as you're rebuilding your road traverger you're also immediately going up to hive you're like yeah i'm yeah. still building road traverger but i add, i've yeah. already added the 10 drones the infestation i'm teching up if he counter attacks i will have road traverger to meet it but like Hey, I've made that decision ahead of time because it's not plan B and plan C. So yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the trick it's, there it's is built in. you've done, yeah, you've done a really good job of like putting the blinders on and getting really good at playing the specific layer tech style to get good at it. But, like I was playing PVZ the other day um, versus Zerg and he's like really so good with the layer tech movement. I kept losing fights I should have won because he was so good with his like Roach Hydra movement or his Roach Bane or whatever it was. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, I am so dead. He's going to have Broodlords any second. And he just never had them. And he just never yeah. had them. And he just never had them. And I was like, yeah. oh. And at some point it dawned on me, like, oh, I actually, there's no, I just need to survive. Because this guy's just, it's, it's, he is very good with the layer tech unit usage. Great Baneling run bias, great Roach multi prong, really, really hard to pin down. But there's nothing behind it. He's such yeah. a specialist in that style. And suddenly all the pressure was off my shoulders because rather than the normal PVZ mindset, like, I got to get you before your broods are out. I don't have enough money to make a Stargate <laughs> transition. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, I could just fucking sit here and max out on Archon Storm Immortal, push, kill your army, lose two Archons as I size storm everything, kill 130 supply of Zerg. And that was only allowed because he gave yeah. me this 10 minute window where I didn't need to do anything other than keep building my army up, right? Yeah. And it's this thing where it's like, if that player does that, gets that good, and then adds the transition on it and starts to learn how to do that transition. And they do that after the third wave of layer tech units even, yeah. rather than never doing it after 20 waves. Yeah, 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 It's game over, you know? So it's it's cool to always, like, this is where mental flexibility comes in in StarCraft. It's this mixture of being super stubborn and getting yeah. really good at this thing. And this, it's, I live or die on layer tech. I, I gotta win with these yeah. units. And then... Once you get good at that, you're like, oh, I'm just going to add this other thing. And suddenly it's like, it amplifies all that work you put into layer tech is worth yeah. so much now because now you know how to swap into hive tech as well. Yeah. No, and I mean, I definitely feel like very comfortable with like what I'm already doing, like in a general sense, you know? So like it, it does definitely feel like, I don't know, like I, I just find myself in situations where I'm like, what would a mature player do in this situation instead of <laughs> remaxing for the fourth time on a weaker than before a composition you know like um but yeah man. <laughs> sounds good sounds exciting you know it, it, it if you split your army in two you get the right concave you catch them when they're moving out there are games you will win with just roach ravager that you probably shouldn't have <laughs> you're just sitting there you're like yep i just kind of need them to move out and let me get a concave on their army with their tanks on siege and you're like oh it worked oh i won the game like like there's it feels terrible yeah because you're like well I'm rolling a, you know, a die, a dice, a six, a D6, and I need the six. Like, you know, then, oh, you know what? Actually, people pretty regularly move out thinking they have the biggest scarier army. And if you're set up perfectly for that one maneuver, it's like, a, you know, I call that a defensive all in. It's the, yeah, you're all in, but you can never break them. So you need to wait for them to move out to attack you. And that's when you've got to catch yeah, yeah, them yeah. with their pants down, right? It's the Oh yeah. I mean I've definitely yeah. caught I've definitely caught a game or two from having, you know, like the MVP change link that just tells me that every tank is leaving. And I'm like, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> um 
Yeah, if you want to add the icing on top of the cake, right, you get burrow with those investors as well, and it's oof, 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 oof. but that, that unnecessary for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one step at a time. <laughs> one step at a time, indeed. Um, I think it was like way back when Battle Mech was first a big thing. I remember Serral just having a, a investor up on the cliff, and he like pops it up and just fucking fungles like thirteen cyclones, and then the the Ling Bane Roach just kills it all. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, look, this is unrelated, but it's Serral related. But I've been noticing Serral just does this now, where he just he just takes two investors and he just puts them like anywhere, you know, like any corner that's just oh, yeah. somewhere near the Terran, and it it blows my mind how long they live and how they actually just surprise and pop out and get value it's it's insane heck yeah dude just uh, nerding out for a second here it's like um when bc meta was first big and the euros started rushing burrow neural and there'd just be three infestors waiting on the edge of the map and they'd see the bcs fly over them and they're like hey, hey, hey. triple neuro teleport them into the the spore queen they'd have like six spore crawlers waiting somewhere with all their queens oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they'd use their teleport up just jump there and be dead and you're like oh this is so so silly as a way of countering it <laughs> that one didn't last long because sometimes the bcs would hit 30 seconds before neuro was done and just kill yeah. the queen and it was like yeah no <laughs> but um very fun well anyway um are you gonna stream today at all mate uh yeah a little bit later but uh i'll probably give it give it the old college try all right guys in chat one of the most positive fun streamers out there getting better every day about what 4k zerg at the moment right uh we're a little bit on a downswing but you know hey we're in the three eight ballpark (laughs) gonna be masters in a few months no doubt mate um on the on the grind getting better one match up at a time so yeah, so we're, we're, MMR is about the same as it was before, but you felt a lot, a lot more confident in ZVP. This is going to make you way more confident in ZVT. Um, yeah, no, I think this will be huge for you, dude. So good luck with your practice. Uh, if anything doesn't make sense in the notes, shoot me a DM. Sure. Otherwise, uh, yeah, good luck in the practice, my friend. Thanks, man. Hope you have a nice stream and uh, appreciate you. Cheers, mate. Have a good night, yo.